Lately, it seems like I have to call in favors to get a cloud in my video. It's just been clear sky after clear sky. And I suppose that is typical for a La Nina pattern in the central U.S. Let's take a look at that surface map for this afternoon. We've got a pretty strong polar front nosing into the central plains and the Midwest. There it is, driving cold air into Kansas, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Temperatures down to 38 at Minneapolis, down to 27 at Bismarck, and 36 in Denver. Some of that cold air even spilling down through Utah into the Four Corners area and into Las Vegas. And you can see those northeast winds there at Vegas, 69 there with 75 at Phoenix out ahead of the front. We do have this little upper air system south of Arizona. We're going to look at that on the upper air charts and see if that might have any bearing for Texas. Sometimes those will ride up and over the dome of high pressure and produce clouds and sometimes precipitation. And that's what happened back in February with the second shot of precip back during the midst of that big deep freeze. We had some snow a second round and that was due to one of these systems coming up and over the cold air. A very warm day for the eastern U.S. We've got 60s and a few 70s showing up there. 60s all the way up into Ontario and that's where we hit the triple point around Lake Huron, and as we go north of that warm front, we get back into those 40s and 30s. And if you go north of Toronto towards Ottawa and Montreal, they've got some wintry weather. I'll bring that up a little bit further north. That's that powerful system that moved through British Columbia, produced some massive flooding around the Vancouver area. However, you can see that has quickly moved on off, leaving high pressure across British Columbia in its wake. Let's take a look out in the Pacific. Well, we've got a, another system lining up for the northwestern U.S. We'll have to go to the GFS to resolve what's going to happen with that. Then taking a look up in Alaska, yeah, the deep freeze is underway. If we go up a little bit further north, 1040 millibar high across the Chukchi Sea, right there near the Russia-U.S. boundary. Temperatures down to 22, below zero on the north slope. Looks like, uh, I don't think that is Fairbanks. I think that might be Big Delta. I don't know. Looks like it is below zero. And minus 22 at McGrath. And a very healthy push of cold air coming across the northern Aleutians into the Kodiak area and some very frigid conditions back behind that surge. The Canadian Arctic is looking definitely colder. Remember last week we were talking about how mild it was and temperatures were in the 20s and 30s. Well, that has flip-flopped. We've had a lot of production of cold air. Temperatures are down below zero, like we should see this time of year. Minus 20 at Resolute at this hour, and towards the top of the map, minus two at Eureka. Moving out into the Atlantic. Powerful system there approaching Iceland. They've got snow coming down at Reykjavik. Yeah, we can go a little bit further. And that looks like that system that moved across Nova Scotia and Newfoundland two days ago, heading out into the Atlantic, and in its wake, a lot of cold air advection and cold air advection precip across much of the Maritimes. As we mentioned, warm across parts of the eastern U.S., down towards East Texas, where we have 80s. None of these are breaking any records, but they are coming within 4 degrees of the record for the date. There's that upper air system that we talked about over northwestern Mexico. This appears to be comprised mostly of cirrus, especially up there in Tucson, but it does look like there may be a few convective elements down in here, possibly producing virga and maybe a few showers. 
The water vapor imagery does certainly show a comma shape. There it is right there with a dry slot in the back. So this suggests that there is a quasi-geostrophic disturbance moving through the flow south of Arizona. The 300 millibar relative humidity, this is up at 30,000 feet, does show that system about exactly where it was pictured on the satellite. And in the wake of it, there's that dry slot coming into the back of the system, dropping down to 500 millibars. Looks like it's still there, but we pick up the moisture mostly in the back of the system. Here's how it looks on the mid-tropospheric heights and vorticity. This is maybe suggesting the ascent area right in that region with the shortwave possibly right in there. Let's see how that evolves. Well, going into tonight, I don't see a whole lot of development on that feature. It gradually moves eastward across northern Mexico, and it looks like by tomorrow evening, it's emerging in this area right here. So the effect on that will be mostly in South Texas, maybe an increase in the cloudiness, maybe with this troughing here, some destabilization, which could have an effect on convective precip if the moisture is good enough. In fact, let's take a look at the column. Well, looks like it's pretty well capped, so I think we can rule that out. Anyway, yeah, some trace of it right there. But let's go back to today's chart and look at the picture elsewhere. What do we have here? A ridge on the east coast, a ridge on the west coast, and in between, long wave trough. And breaking that down even further, there's a medium scale trough right there across the northern plains. That's going to be associated with that strong cold air advection following that front, which is located down in this region here. Remember that we always stack the upper air low back towards the cold air. And indeed, at 500 millibars, we do find the upper level low in western Ontario. Then just a quick preview over the next couple of days, the system progresses very rapidly to the east. The trough across the northern plains deepens further. That's that trough there moving across Chicago early tomorrow and heading in for the northeastern U.S. for Thursday night. That'll clear on out and we get broad ridging across much of the country. Here comes the next system. That's moving into Oregon for Friday and then crossing the Rockies for Saturday and Sunday. Looks like that trough does kind of shear out. That's it right there. I don't see a whole lot of amplification. In fact, where I'm seeing the amplification is with the long wave pattern. Yep, look at that ridge. And let's see how that plays out on the surface pressure and thickness. That's what we have this afternoon, and as we roll that forward, you're going to see the surge of cold air move southeast into the Mississippi River Valley and into Texas. By tomorrow morning, looks like that cold front is extending from Pittsburgh down through Nashville and to the Houston and Corpus Christi area. 1036 millibar high driving that cold air. And the bulk of the cold air is in Minnesota. We can see that that's heading for Ontario and New York. Anyway, this is a very progressive system. And already by tomorrow night and Friday morning, it's already clearing the northeastern U.S. Cold air in its wake, and we're already getting that warm up in the plains. That's the return flow. Not quite set up in Texas, but definitely on the Great Plains, gusty southwest winds. Here comes the next system on the west coast. This looks a lot weaker than what we had two days ago. Still, maybe some snow in the mountains of Washington and maybe even some of the valleys. 540 decameter thickness line hanging around that area. And then the system goes aloft. Kind of hard to pick that out, but I, I know it's there. Roughly right around that marking that I got. Maybe a little further south. 
And you can see the showers up there in the Great Basin. And that's going to emerge east of the Rockies. And that's set there. Very weak emergence, actually. It looks like it floats on top of this entire dome going through Saturday and Sunday. And then we see it emerge out here during the day on Sunday. And looks like we have a reinforcement of cold air. And here comes another shot through Minnesota. So, yeah, this is the kind of classic pattern that I expect during a La Nina setup. You tend to get a lot of these cold Alberta Clippers surges of cold air and a prevailing northwest to southeast flow. And that's indeed what we have here. So, yeah, some more rain on the East Coast and showers. And we'll go ahead and move on up to Thanksgiving. I think that's what everybody is wondering about. Looks like another surge of cold air coming across the Rockies for midweek. And that's going to be around the evening before Thanksgiving. Looks very similar to what we have today, actually. Very, very similar. Cold high pressure in the Rockies, cold air advection in the central plains, and warm out east. And that'll probably be the pattern for Thanksgiving proper, which is what you see right there. So if you're west of the Appalachians, out to the Rockies, looks cold. Looks uh, a little bit wet in Texas. And on the east coast proper, looks warm. And for the southwestern U.S., looks mild, except in Oregon and Washington, where there will be some more precip. Okay, we'll take a look at the weather around the country. Well, in Arizona, we're north of that system that we talked about. You can see a little bit of cirrus down to the south. And you can see some fog and stratus in the San Joaquin Valley, in fact, in Bakersfield, Fresno, Sacramento, and that has burned right off. At the sour, not much of it left, but around Sacramento, yeah, it's continuing to hang on. Looks like a very nice day for the central west coast area. That appears to be Mount Shasta. And further north around Medford, I think that is some fog in the valleys. I'm not too sure that, yeah, I don't think that that's snow. Yeah, the Cascades are right in this area here. They are not snow-capped, so yeah, that's going to be following the valleys, which makes that stratus and fog. The Pacific Northwest digging out from that flood that we had back on Monday. Some snow-capped mountains east of Seattle. Otherwise clear, except for some cirrus and altocumulus. Seeing some beautiful snow-capped mountains in around Yellowstone and around Gillette. And, of course, the Rockies in Montana. And a little bit of snow up to the north. Notice how it doesn't move. Cold air stratocumulus once again across the Dakotas into Minnesota. As we go further south, we get closer to the front, and that is not the front. That's some lift back behind it, a little bit of moisture and ascent. To actually find the front, we've got to go even further south. And there it is, stratocumulus and altocumulus across Oklahoma. This uh, cloud field across Arkansas, southeastern Oklahoma, that's going to be the warm sector. And as we go further back behind the front, which is right around there, you can see the elements are moving towards the southwest. This is a highly sheared environment. And as a result, we're getting some transverse banding in the cloud field. Down in Texas, that's in the heart of the tropical air, the cold front making some progress into the Dallas area, San Angelo. So we have the cold northerly flow north of that boundary, and on the other side, southerly flow. 
Then for the southeastern U.S., yeah, I think those plots do make the cloud field kind of hard to read. Go ahead and remove that. That's going to be the return moisture coming up through the Mississippi River Valley. And as we get further out to the east, we get into that high pressure area along the east coast. Cloudy skies in the Midwest. They are in that warm sector. So a lot of warm advection, stratocumulus and stratus and outcumulus. And it gets even thicker as you get up towards the Great Lakes. The cold front running about like that, the warm front about like that, and we pick up the snow and wintry precip way up off the top of the chart. And it's already nighttime in the northeastern U.S., a cloudy evening, another frontal system approaching, and the weather will continue deteriorating during the evening. And that's all for our Wednesday edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you for joining. And a special thanks to Rick Rolliter and Brock Austin, our newest Patreon supporters. We'll see you back here on Friday. Take care and have a great Wednesday evening. Bye-bye.